for most power lifters, I would say anytime you have an opportunity to do single arm or single leg, do it. Throwing on some sleeves, protect that elbow. What's the elbow joint involved in? You try to tell me what it's not involved in. How about that? Fucking involved in everything we do in the gym when it comes to weights. It's involved in the bench. It's involved in the squat. Arms are here. A lot of times people get shit in here going on. Heavily involved in deadlift. People pop biceps off. That elbow joint gets killed. It gets killed on back day. It get, gets killed on chest day. It gets killed when you try to squat. It gets killed when we deadlift, bench press, chest day. I mean, it's just your, your, your whole forearm, you know, all the way through your fingers, your hands, your forearms, all the way around the elbow joint, bicep, all the way into the tricep, all the way into the shoulder joint is really getting worked tremendously all the time. So protect yourself before you wreck yourself. Regardless of goals and regardless of where you're at in your lifting career, hypertrophy training is interesting because all you really need is range of motion. You need a nice tempo so that you're lifting the weight smoothly and correctly. Uh, but the main thing that you need is you need to push yourself to, to a point of failure or sometimes a point of you know, having an extra rep or two in the tank if it's only set number one. But as you progress, you really do want it to be real failure. And it gets to be hard to figure that out. It gets to be really tough to, to know how hard to push. But I like to pick weights and then worry about the reps later on so i'll select weights and i try to move the weights for as many reps as i can keeping range of motion in mind keeping tempo in mind and keeping in mind that i want to get to failure those are like the three main things i try to do during the lift but i'm not really thinking like oh i'm gonna get 13 reps or i'm gonna stop at 12 reps i try to just i allow the weight to dictate the reps there's not only there's not just one way to train so you might hear me preaching about form quite a bit and technique and execution. And you'll hear that from older lifters, but it's because the older lifters have figured it out. Plus they understand you can get a lot of the rewards, a lot of the benefits without having a lot of the negatives settle in. So my joints will be healthier. My body will be healthier. I don't need to worry about the weight. On the other side of things, I've already proven myself to myself. I already feel very comfortable with how strong I was and how strong I currently am. So I don't feel like I need to pour anything into that anymore i think i got out of it what i could get out of it i did the best i could literally did the best i could i squatted 1080 and i tumbled with 1085 it took me out wiped me out of power lifting right so i pushed out as hard as i could but what i'd also say is that you do need to be a savage and you do need to push the weights here and there so even though i'm preaching you know form and technique and and hey execute the lift i, I do think it's important for you younger guys to get after it a little bit, maybe you do put on a little extra weight. Maybe your form does waver a little bit. And maybe um, maybe you don't have full range of motion. But that shouldn't be the majority of your training. That should only represent a really small portion of your training. That's maybe like one set out of four uh, in a given in a given workout. And and maybe, you know, only a only a couple times a week that you're doing that, where you're going for it on a max set of as many reps as you can on a curl, you know, or, or you're blowing out a squat, you're doing an AMRAP or something, and you don't really care if your form's a little wavery, but for the most part, we wanna keep our shit dialed in. I'm gonna do a one-arm one arm press. It's been a while since I've tried anything like this. One thing I like about the one-arm is that when I do military, a lot of times it's hard for me to get the weight up. When I do one-arm, I have a little bit more freedom, that's why I have it over here. I can bring it kind of up and off to the side. Gonna, again, try to keep a good tempo, try to keep a good rhythm. Hike them up. Uh, the next two sets, I'm gonna throw in a lateral raise as well. I didn't wanna do it on the first one because I wanna be able to use some kind of weight for all the sets. And so the 60 will be challenging enough uh, with the lateral raise mixed in. Another little tip here is, we're at a pretty decent angle right here, but in my opinion, this is just me, I think that 
you could be back here and we're still working shoulders. This is still work the shit out of your shoulder. For me, my shoulders are like kind of a weak point, so I'm trying to bring them up. I'm trying to force myself to do it a little straighter. But what it will allow you to do to bring it back, if, A, if you have a hurt shoulder, you'll probably be more comfortable. The lockout will be a lot more comfortable. Um, the range of motion in general will be more comfortable. And B, for those of you that are new and just really can't handle much weight yet, you might wanna uh, bring that incline back a little bit. And think about when you do your incline presses, that your incline presses are just a much different angle. So as long as, as, long as you're making sure that it's different each time, it's different. Time for those ladder rules. Doing uh, single arm, single leg stuff. I talk about it quite a bit. Uh, it's a little bit like doing a superset. You know, you do a set of 10 of a tricep push down with both arms engaged, right? And then you take the pin and you drop the weight, right? Well, in this case, you're doing two separate sets. You're doing 10 for the left side, 10 for the right side. So just like the drop set, it's 20 total repetitions, right? Now, you can also make an argument that when you do single arm or single leg, it might be, it can oftentimes be less work because it will be a lot less weight, right? So you gotta kind of balance out the two and keep that in mind. So that means that you don't do everything single arm. But anytime, I would say, for, for most power lifters, I would say anytime you have an opportunity to do single arm or single leg, do it. Because I just don't think we get enough of it. So much concentration on the barbell. And maybe you can say the same with Olympic lifters. Bodybuilding is a little different. You know, do what you need to do. Do what you need to bring up. And if you ever stepped on stage, you know what that is already. So anyway, I'm fucking out of here. I need to go eat. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. Catch you guys later.